So I got some more common legal myths for you. So the first one is there is no attorney-client privilege in an action unless the attorney has made an appearance. So this comes from Murphy's reading of Chile's document the other day where he said, I don't know, he referred to some discussions with his legal team and Murphy says, well, that's um, going to be um, discoverable by the opposing party now and it's not protected because there's no attorney that's filed an appearance or something like that. So uh, that's not true. Uh, I could definitely ghostwrite all of Chile's documents and still have attorney-client privilege. Uh, the major thing that determines whether your communications between you and an attorney are pillaged is whether uh, the contents of the communication is primarily uh, leg legal opinion, legal services, right? So, for example, when uh, Murbeast was trying to say that his wicker discussions with with um, Kate were going to be privileged, but uh, I, the motion, was it a motion? Yeah, the motion for sanctions from Chile said that the contents of the communication were uh, mixed content at, at best, which means they're a combination of legal stuff and non-legal stuff. So, Let's move on to the next one. So, only attorney-client communications are privileged. That's also not true, right? Otherwise, you couldn't trust sending any documents to your paralegals and, and legal assistants and researchers and expert witnesses. Otherwise, right, they'd instantly be discoverable. So, either where Murbeast practices law, they don't have the work product doctrine, which I doubt, or he's just not familiar with it. So uh, attorney-client privileges are not the only privileges recognized in court. There's also work product privilege, which is basically documents that, that have to do with your your litigation that um, specifically right, discuss strategy and stuff like that that don't need to be disclosed to the opposing party. So the next one, oh, so I guess there's one thing to say about uh, work product privilege, though, is the privilege is not as strong as attorney-client privilege. So attorney-client privilege um, survives death of the client. Uh, attorney-client privilege uh, cannot be defeated by argument, whereas work product privilege can. Uh, you could argue that you definitely need access to those work product privilege or uh, it's going to be a uh, miscarriage of justice, which is, isn't, is unlikely to occur, but in, in theory, and we're talking about theory, that could happen. All right, so there is no need to submit video evidence to the court. So, I don't know, Murbeast and then tons of comments too are saying like why is Chile trying to submit video evidence to the court court doesn't need that well that's not correct so in fact if you look at some of Ben Wish's affidavits he talks about carrying a uh, thumb drive with the videos to the court for the review so could it be that Ben Wish that's involved in this federal lawsuit doesn't know what he's talking about or maybe Murphy doesn't know what he's talking about so I'm arguing the latter. So you you should, if you reference a video, you should make it available to the court for, for review. And then uh, you're also required to provide a copy of the video to the opposition. But it, it is also weird that, according to what Shelley says, the clerks have not told them what format they prefer because they should do that. But 
I mean, I usually default to DVD if they don't answer, but they, they should, they should answer. Because, um, I mean, if Ben's submitting thumb drive, obviously he has some added benefit of knowing what's going on and that they're not sharing. So the final number, or final legal myth is lawyers like to argue and never admit to being wrong. So that is actually not a myth. That is completely true. We like to argue and um, we're never wrong. We just will continue adding argument that shows why we're right and uh, find edge cases. So we're never wrong, yet we will we'll learn from our mistakes. So I'm hoping that that's the case with Murbius when he hears, you know, about these cases where he's wrong. He's going to argue edge cases, and, you know, that's not what we we're talking about. But, uh, you know, when he goes to apply this, um, he will remember um, what he learned. For example, when Ben Wish uh, early on in this case submitted some evidence that um, did not follow the rules of evidence, and then Chile pointed it out. You know, ben, of course, is not going to admit that, but then in his next filing, he um, did not make the same mistakes. So lawyers like to argue. If you like to argue, you should become a lawyer. So that's what I got. Have a good one. Bye.